Hi, my name is Matt Cardwell. In this video, we're going to demonstrate setting up StopShot Studio for a ballistics capture. The very first setup is in the software. And in the StopShot Studio software, the very first thing we're going to do is change output 1 to ballistics mode. Next, to help us track down any setup issues, we're going to change output 2 to X beam A. Output 3, we're going to change to X beam B. And the last output, we're going to change that to A and B. And then what we'll do is we'll scroll down here and disable all the other outputs that we're not using so we don't have them flashing unneededly. And the other thing we're going to do is go back up to that ballistics setting for output one. We're going to bump up that timeout to 500 milliseconds. So what that means is that the projectile will have to cross through the beam sensors in 500 milliseconds or less to, in order to trigger output number one. All right, now that we've got those settings in there, the first thing we're going to do is turn up the transmit power level all the way. And see the light turn green on A, and it's gonna turn orange, which is hard to see on the camera, but transmit power levels up all the way. Now as we swipe our finger through the A sensor, you'll see output two come on. There we go, and if I swipe it through B, you get the B sensor to come on. So that looks great. And if I swipe it through both, you see a sensor number two come on, and then B sensor number three come on, and finally output one. There we go. Beautiful. So I should mention too that we don't have anything on the front of these. As you can see in the picture, uh, we've removed the light shade or the snoop that's over top of that, and the transmitters do not have their lenses on them. Uh, so make sure that that setup is set properly for ballistics, otherwise you'll have a hard time catching a pellet. Now what we're going to do is turn down the power all the way. You'll see the light go out. That's good. Uh, now what, what we're going to do is slowly turn up the transmit power just until that light changes color. And the reason we're doing that is it'll maximize the amount uh, it'll maximize the sensitivity. If it's turned up too high, it'll blow right past the pellet and uh, it won't detect it. It'll, your, your finger will break the beam, but something small like a pellet won't. So here we go. We're going to turn this up slowly, real slowly, just until we see the light change colors. And there we go. And we're going to look at the output. There you can see the outputs on stop shot are bouncing around. That means we're, we're right on the edge. We want to turn it up just enough to where we don't see that, that uh, output activate. So the A sensor is good. Now we're going to repeat the process for the B sensor, turning it up really, really slow. And we don't want to overshoot it because we want this thing to be able to detect very small pellet. I'm going to back it down a little bit and then increase it. There we go. Now that should be fine. Now to test this, I'm going to drop a pellet through the beam. There we go. I saw output one activate. That's good. Now I'm going to drop one through the B sensor. Perfect. So it detected both of them. That's exactly what we want. So now things are set up for maximum sensitivity. What I'm gonna do is turn on our flashes, and now we'll take a test shot. So we'll get our fixture here. We'll do a single cock on the gun. Perfect. Now if you don't get a flash, if you don't see your flashes activated, the output one doesn't activate, Take a look at the settings, because if you see the A sensor light up, but not the B sensor uh, on the outputs of stop shot, then you know that the, the A sensor is fine and the B sensor needs some adjustment. Now there's two things to adjust. One is the power level, which is really, really, that takes a little bit of, little bit of work to get it dialed in just right. 
the other thing is, is if your gun isn't level or the setup isn't level, you could be missing that sensor entirely. So it may not have anything to do with the power level. Uh, those are the things to check out. So you can use that to help you diagnose what sensor isn't working properly or which what alignment issues or power levels you have to fix. The other thing you'll notice by the setup picture is that we have the rifle pointing more towards the transmitter side instead of the receiver. Either side will work, but you should avoid the middle. Uh, it'll, it'll be easier to detect if you just put it on the transmitter side so the projectile will shoot closer towards the transmitters rather than uh, the center or the receivers. And that's about it for ballistics. Uh, in the other video that we have for ballistics, we talked about the ballistics multiplier and how that works. But this is the main setup that we use here for doing ballistics photography. Thank you for watching.